with just our basic warm up and then we will get to the chair. Sitting bones toward the floor, hips open, shoulders relaxed down, shoulder blades toward your waist. Think about your bottom ribs going toward your spine and up, getting your core activated. And just relax your arms at your side. Crown up toward the ceiling. Keep stretching your spine apart. And don't forget to breathe. So as you inhale, bring your arms to shoulder level. Stretch way out to the side. Exhale, hands to your chest, elbows a little back. Stretch forward, keeping your shoulders down. And exhale, your hands behind you. Fingertips clasped, press the knuckles toward the floor and lift your heart. So stretch through your spine, out through the top of your head, and breathe. And then exhaling, pivot at your hips and come on over into your forward bend. So bring your hands up toward the ceiling, your head down toward your legs, and relax. So get that lower back beginning to stretch out. You can keep your knees a little bent, or you can straighten them and let the back of your legs get a good stretch. And then tuck in your chin, bend your knees a little bit, lift your ribs, drop your sitting bones, and wind your spine slowly back up and into the back bend. So chest toward the ceiling looking overhead, hands pressing down. So come into that upper body, lifting your heart. And then inhale, upright, exhale, and release. Just feel your spine, a little bit more circulation coming into it, getting you warmed up. And then inhaling again, arms out, hands to your chest, elbows back, open your heart. Stretch forward, keep the shoulders down. And hands behind you, clasp the opposite way and lifting your heart. Stretch your spine as you come into that upper body back bend and pivot over, exhaling into your forward bend. So just deepen as much or as little as feels right for you. Let that lower back release. Kind of move your head around, get the neck moving. No stress or strain. And again, slowly work your way back up and lift your heart, stretch your head back and shoulders down. And then inhaling, come up, exhale and release. Take a moment, feeling how that spine is activated. And then arms out, shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling and right over your shoulder. Hands past each other, turn them around and clasp, and bring your arms back by your ears. Shoulders and sitting bones down, whole body straight to the front, and lean over to the side. So push your knee away from the down to get that extra stretch through your ribs, and out through the top of your head and your hands. Inhale to the center, hands around. And again, shoulders down, sitting bones down, everything straight as you lean into that side stretch. So make sure you're pushing the foot down and out through your hands and head, and you're not leaning that top shoulder forward. And then again, inhaling, come back up. Exhale, into mountain. Take a moment there, feeling the sides of your body and your spine and get ready for our twist. So remember, sitting bones down, base of the skull up so that spine keeps stretching open. Arms shoulder level, palms to the ceiling, arms over your shoulders, clasp your elbows. So sitting bones down, stretch your spine, breathing in, and twist either way. Knees a little bent, stretch it up, and pivot in, and do the forward bend. Just relax there, letting your body release tension, and relaxing in your twist. Keep the weight on both feet as much as you can, and staying in your twist, work your way back. Coming into your upper body for a little twisted back bend, not too much in that lower back. Don't overdo it. And then inhale, exhale to the center, 
switch your arms around, and again, realign with those arms next to your ears. Stretch your spine as you breathe in, and exhale in the other direction. A lengthening in, breathing in, and turn it over as you exhale, and relax. So come into your forward bend. Deepen as much or as little as feels right. And release any tension. Keep the weight on both feet as you keep your twist, slowly working your way back up. And look towards the ceiling, elbows back, coming into that upper body back bend. Shoulders down, stretch the spine. Exhaling, come upright, up to the center, arms up, palms to the side and down, shoulder level. Pivot forward, keep your back as flat as you can. Keep your arms straight out. Get your body parallel to the floor as much as you can. And then drop into ragdoll. So just hang arms going wherever they fall. Kind of bend your knees if you want to a little bit or straighten, tightening the front of your thighs and pulling your kneecaps toward the thighs to get those hamstrings stretched on the back of your legs. And then slowly, once again, chin in as you wind your way back into mountain pose. And just take a moment there, feeling all that twist energy, all that spinal activation. And remember, personal practice, do what's right for your body. I know, Cecilia, you had the hip replacement, so be very gentle wherever you need to. So we're going to start standing. And we're going to just turn the feet a little bit out with the knees going the same direction the toes are going. And bend your knees toward your toes, not beyond. Put your hands above your knees. Just position, don't support. And we're going to do that little pelvic, pelvic tilt. So the hands are here. The knees don't move and your shoulders don't move, but the sitting bones and hips do. So you're going to push the sitting bones back and the chest a little forward coming into that back bend. And then you're going to put the sitting bones down and forward as you pull your ribs in and tuck your chin in forward bend. So it's just a little bit of motion through that hip and lower body. Moving into the back bend, breathing in, exhaling into the forward bend, just contracting gently through that midsection. So feel the pelvis moving, the hips moving, just very gently. And as always, not pressure on those knees, not moving the knees, not moving your head and shoulders, just moving through the torso, through the hips. Getting some lubrication through the hips and some motion through the lower back. And then releasing that and coming back into mountain pose, come back to your standing position. And we're going to bend the knees a little bit and clasp your arms behind your lower back, just forearms together. And then we're circling the hips, getting that hip area again having a little range of motion. So nice big circles as much as your body wants to do. Remember, personal practice, feel what's right. And then stop the circles and go the opposite direction. So same thing, going the other way. Just keep your shoulders relaxed and your spine moving through that, again, lower hip and pelvic area. And then release back into mountain pose and take a moment to feel how your body is. And we're going to get our chair and set it up. So we're going to do a standing practice first with your chair. So you can turn the back of your chair toward you. And you want the side of your foot parallel to the side of the, or the back of the chair, so that you're kind of inner rotating that hip a little bit right at the top of the thigh, so that the whole leg is stacked. Hip bone, kneecap, 
ankle and toes, everything pointing forward on your grounded foot. You can hold the chair or you don't have to. We're gonna do a balance practice. So remember, you wanna pick up your toes, get the base of your toes all the way across connected. So big toe and little toe, everything connected and then put the toes down, spreading them out but not gripping because that raises the base of your toes and gives you less support. Make sure both the inside and outside of your heel stay down so that your whole foot has connection to the floor. So once you're stacked and supported with that leg like that, up through your shoulder, up through your spine, you can put weight into that foot and release the other one. So you can keep the toes down if you're feeling balance challenged. You can hold on to the chair or not, your choice. And then if that's feeling like you're pretty stable, you can move your leg up till parallel to the floor with the thigh, or you can pull it in toward your chest and get it a little bit more constricted through that hip. And then we're gonna move the ankle because remember, we don't wanna fall, so we wanna have our ankles in good shape. So circle it around one direction, and then stop and circle it around the other direction. And then point and flex a few times. And just get that ankle nice and lubricated. And then release that leg back down and switch your chair to the other side. So as you become familiar with doing this with the chair, you'll notice that you have a special distance from the chair that makes it easier for you to be in the right position to hold your chair if you want to. So finding that position really helps. And again, get that outside of your foot parallel to the back of the chair. Get your foot grounded and centered through the base of the toes and the heel. Get those toes spreading out, not gripping. Get everything stacked so that slight inner rotation at the top of the thigh to keep the hip bone, knee, and ankle lined up. Lengthen up through your spine. Remember, the more you activate your core, the more that helps support your spine as well. Hold on to the chair or not, and bring that other foot up. Again, if you're challenged on this side, and sometimes one side's easier than the other, just notice. You can keep those toes down, or you can bring the foot up a little bit more, or in toward your heart. And again, reach that crown to the ceiling while you're steadying yourself. Circles the other way. And flexing and pointing. And release that foot back down and feel how that feels to be reconnected into the earth with both feet. So mountain pose, nice and steady. And then we're going to turn the chair and sit. Well, I'm going to turn the chair. It doesn't matter what direction you are, just so you can see what's going on if you need to. So your feet are right under your your ankles are right under your knees and your knees are straight in front of your hips as you're seated. So you wanna make sure that your whole body is nice and sturdy. I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. So make sure that everything's nicely lined up and you're slightly away from the back of your chair. So the kind of lower back is near the bottom of the back of your chair. And then we're going to take the hands behind and work that chest area. So clasp your hands behind you, pull your back onto the back of the chair, push your hands toward the floor, and look up toward the ceiling. So you can keep your chin tucked toward your chest so you don't strain your neck, or you can look further back if you like to get that neck stretched more. But really we wanna focus on getting the shoulders open and that heart open toward the ceiling. So just sitting into your sitting bones, lengthening through the top of your head, feeling that chest expand as you push your hands further toward the mat. Keep breathing. And then tuck your chin toward your chest, release your hands back to your lap, and sit back straight up 
and feel your spine. So as you're in that position, just make sure that your sitting bones are both evenly connected. You're stacked up through your spine with your shoulders over your hips and the crown reaching to the ceiling. Knees still right in front of your hips, ankles right underneath. And of course, we're going to balance the body by clasping the hands the opposite way as we do it again. So bring your hands behind, have the other finger on the outside, other thumb on the outside, and then again, pull your, heart, your back onto the chair, lift your heart, push your top of your head back toward the wall behind you, and your hands down toward the floor. So you can keep the heels of your palms apart, or you can push them together, which will give you a little bit more work across that shoulder and arm area. Up to you what you choose to do. Keep lengthening. You can keep, keep the chin toward your chest a little bit if it feels like your neck is crunching too much as you go back. Sink into the sitting bones, lengthen out through the top of your head. And when you're ready to release, again, the chin comes toward your chest, your hands release back to your lap, and you sit back up straight. And then just stay there feeling that. I'm going to turn back around and face the camera. So once again, knees right under the hips, toes straight ahead, ankles right under the knees, and shoulders over your hips. Notice your sitting bones. Just get connected into them. And we're going to work the hips a little bit more. So the first thing we're going to do is just put your thumbs into that crease at the top of your thighs. Keep your back nice and straight and flat. Lead with your chin and your chest and pivot forward, coming with your ribs down toward your legs and your whole body just in a straight line as you come into that forward motion. So a little abdominal work, a little thigh work, a little bit of spine lengthening and then pivot back up and release your hands. Just notice your torso, notice your spine, and notice your hips. And then we're going to take the one leg straight out in front, and you can slide to the front of your chair if that makes it easier to straighten your leg. And we're going to flex the heel, <clears throat> kind of pull the kneecap toward your thigh, and tighten the front of your thigh so the hamstring on the back of your leg gets a good stretch. Push out through the bottom of your foot and then keep the leg straight as you lift that leg off the floor. So keep extending out through the bottom of your foot. Use those abdominals to help control the situation through that whole leg. And if you want, you can raise the foot a little bit more, which is a little bit more effortful for perhaps your leg and your abs. And then slowly lower that foot back down and ankle under your knee once again. So kind of feel that situation, that activity through that midsection. And of course, we're going to do the other leg. So slide the heel forward, flex the foot, straighten the leg, Get that thigh activated, kneecap up so those hamstrings get a good straight stretch. And again, sinking into both sitting bones evenly, raise that leg, eyes parallel as much as you can, pushing out through the bottom of your foot. And again, keep the upper body straight, core supporting you so that you're not slumping at all through that shoulder area. If you love it, you can raise your foot higher which gives you a little bit more activation through the abs and the leg, or not, your choice. And then exhaling, slowly bring that foot back down. And again, ankle under your knee and everything aligned. Take a moment feeling your midsection, noticing more circulation maybe. And then we're gonna bring the one foot up with the ankle above the opposite knee. And you can just let this knee come down as much or as little as it wants to and allow your body to sink evenly into both sitting bones. So just take a moment there. 
You can circle your foot, again, activating that ankle, getting it working, and the opposite direction. And you can push into it at the toes, pushing it with the heel, and then stretching toes away from you. And relax it. And then if you want, it's more intense in the hips, so Cecilia, be careful. You can lift that leg a little bit higher and move it back and forth, getting that hip rotator a little bit of lubrication. And then releasing it, I'm going to bring the leg forward, flex the heel, and put it down. So everything's back in its alignment position. Feel that side so we know what we need to do. Balance the body. So go ahead, pick that other foot up, ankle above the knee, letting that knee come as much down as it wants to, and just relax. Keep your upper body upright, core activated, so that that spine is nice and straight behind you. And again, work your ankle. As we age, this is one thing Silver Sneakers says is really important is to keep those ankles flexible so that we don't get stiff feet and fall down. And then circle the opposite way. And again, pushing into the base of the toes, heel out. And then pulling the toes away, getting a nice straight stretch through that front of the ankle. And then releasing, just relaxing. And if you want, bring that foot up a little bit more. The closer it is and the higher it is, the more intense in that hip rotator, so be careful. And again, move it back and forth for that lubrication in that outer hip joint. So breathe, relaxing. And release. And then again, straightening the leg out, bring it back into your seated position. Take a moment there, just feeling what your body is telling you. Noticing how the hip, the legs, maybe the core are a little bit more activated this morning. And then we're going to sink into the sitting bones up through the spine. Bring one hand to your opposite knee and bring the other arm out in front at shoulder level. Stretch up through your spine, and as you exhale, follow your hand around behind into your twist. Bring your hand to the chair, either close to the first side or all the way to the other side if you like a good twist. And breathing, sink into your sitting bones and inhale up through your spine. Get those bones separating for your twist. And then as you exhale, turn from your hips ribs and shoulder and deepen into your twist. Don't just turn your head. So your whole spine is moving into the twist as you breathe and relax. Maximize or minimize. Remember, twists are personal practices just like all yoga. And when you're ready to release, bring your hand back to shoulder level, follow it back to the center, and back to your lap. Take a moment, feel your spine getting a little bit more stimulated, and notice that we need to balance and go the opposite direction. So again, hips in front of the, or knees in front of the hips, knees right over your ankles, hand to that opposite knee. Other arm out at shoulder level, keep the shoulder blades down, the spine stretching open, breathe in, and as you exhale again, follow your hand around. Bring it to the back of the chair wherever it's comfortable for you. Stretch up from the sitting bones through the spine. Exhale, deepen your twist, turning your whole body, hips, ribs, and shoulder, not just your head. And again, maximize or minimize your twist depending on what your spine needs. Breathing. Relaxing. And then releasing your hand behind that to shoulder level. Exhale and follow it around to the center and release. 
Feel your body. Notice how everything is working this morning. And then if you want to move to your relaxation position at the couch, you can do that, or your bed, or you can fold up your chair and bring it back to the wall, or wherever you want. And we're going to stretch up and exhale over to the mat if you're going to the floor. So starting with child's pose, just let your body sink forward. Breathe deep, exhale, and relax. And then sit up on your heels, bring your legs out in front and to the end of the mat or your sofa or bed, and use your abs for support as you roll back onto the surface. Take a moment there, getting everything aligned into the mat, into the surface beneath you, and breathe. And then press your lower back down and bend your knees, bringing your heels up near your hips. Extend your arms out to the side if you can. And allow the shoulders to relax down. We're going to press the low back down, lift your heels up off the surface, and roll them over to one side, turning your head to the opposite side. So come into this twist just gently. Knees toward the floor, if they don't reach, you can put your feet down and give yourself some support, or you can put a pillow under your knee. Head turning for that neck and shoulder twist, shoulders and shoulder blades down for your middle back twist, and the more the knees come to the floor or toward the side, the more your lower back is in the twist. Be gentle wherever you need to. Take a breath. Just relax. And then heels toward your hips and roll onto your back and relax. If you're on a surface where you can't roll the other way, turn yourself around. Otherwise, stay where you are. Hands can be palms up or down as they're out at T position if that's working for your surface. Lower back pressing down. Lift those feet off the floor. Knees bent right above your knee, your hips. And roll the knees to the opposite side, turning your head the other direction. And again, maximize or minimize. Remember, twists are personal practices, just like all of yoga. Do what you need for your lower back, your middle back, and your upper neck and shoulders. Deep breaths. Relaxing. Letting those ligaments release your spine align and balance. And when you're ready to release from this side, again, pull your heels back toward your hips a little bit before you roll onto your back and bring your feet to the surface and extend them out. Hands near your sides, palms up and relax. If your lower back is stressed and strained being in the straight legged position, you can press your back down and bend your knees, putting a pad or pillow under, or angle your knees slightly toward each other to keep them supported so that your lower back isn't stressed and strained. And it's time for relaxation. So go ahead and breathe deeply. Close your eyes and just focus inward, letting your body sink into the surface beneath you. So deep breaths in. Exhaling, letting your hips, your torso, your legs and arms, your whole body just grow heavy, sinking into that surface beneath you. And just let your body go, allowing Mother Earth to support you. Deepen into that earthbound connection. Feel your limbs your torso, everything growing heavier, sinking deeper, relaxing completely. As you relax, just let your body go. And allow thoughts of your body to release. 
And as it does, allow other thoughts in your mind to release as well. As the thoughts flow in and out, just let them go without attention. No need to remember the past or anticipate the future. It's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice what you pay attention to. At this point, just pay attention to your breath flowing in and out. Your body relaxing, sinking deeper. And let your mind drift. No need for attention to any detail. Breathing deep, focusing inward, just finding that peace and letting it grow, filling your body, filling your being, filling your mind, being peace. And of course, you can stay relaxing as long as you would like. If it's time for you to reactivate, you can just begin breathing deeply and drawing energy and awareness back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And begin moving your body gently whenever you're ready to or stay relaxed for as long as you want. And when you're ready to release, press your back down, draw your knees toward your heels toward your hips and your knees toward your heart and give yourself a good appreciative yoga hug letting your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and every day and as you let your body release just a roll to the side and sit back up as you get ready for whatever is ahead of you or just stay relaxed for a while longer Thanks for joining me this morning. Hope that was good.